We are ready. Sure. Hello. Uh, welcome to this week's graphics programming virtual meetup. We follow, we're following the Berlin Code of Conduct. Here's our Discord link. And we have a Twitter. You should follow it. This week, we're covering the Tiny Render Lesson 3, the depth buffer. Here's the link to the tutorial and my reference code if you want to look at a full implementation of it for the most part. So in the last lesson, we had we left with the issue where we had overlapping triangles, where things were in front of things that should have been behind. And that's not good. It you know, looks ugly. It's an artifact. So let's try to fix it. Here's the visual example of what I'm talking about. You can see the eyes and the mouth just look a bit horrifying. So the naive, if not naive, but basic algorithm that was devised to solve this problem is called painter's algorithm, where you draw the, the furthest triangle, and then you draw the next furthest triangle, and so on and so forth, so that when you draw the last triangle, you are always drawing it on top of everything behind it. And that's pretty simple to conceptualize. You just draw them in the correct order, order being which one's whether in the front or the behind. The problem is, is when you have tri triangles, don't always have to be perfectly in front or behind. Sometimes they can intersect, and that means you don't have a front or back. You have to devise some sort of solution for that, where uh, one way you could do it is you could cut the triangles up so that the portions in front and the portions behind are actually two separate pieces, and then you just render those in the correct order. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of a bad solution. It's, in fact, it's, it's incredibly performance intensive, because every time you move the camera, you have to calculate where, which order the triangle should be in. If you have hundreds of thousands of triangles, that's a lot of operations. Uh, subdividing triangles is also not cheap and so it's just it's it's not great so the problem we have is we want to make sure things are ordered and the painters algorithm orders things by a triangle but what if instead we shrunk down our area of focus and done it do it per pixel so the idea is we keep track of how deep each pixel is in the scene and then we can easily know hey is this pixel in front or behind this other pixel and if it's behind it, we just throw it away. But if it's in front, we go, oh, okay, then we're gonna draw that and it removes the old pixel. So to help illustrate this, there's a couple of pictures uh, to, that can showcase what's happening. So this scene has what I was talking about earlier was the triangles overlapping each other. The green triangle intersects with the blue and the blue intersects with the red and the blue is in front of and behind the red one. So, but from a top-down viewpoint, that's all we can see is this, this viewpoint of the red to green and blue. If we drill down and only focus on a single line for it rather than the entire image, we can pretend we have a 2D plane or a, a one-dimensional line rather than a 2D plane or a 3D scene. That makes our, it makes our problem a lot simpler to think about. If we take this scene that we have drawn a line through and use that as a intersection plane, we get what is the 2D side viewpoint. So here we can see there's the, the green line, the blue line, and the red line. Those represent the three triangles. We can draw that using the line uh, function we've had before. And that will, that's very convenient because, hey, look, nice green, bl blue, red visualization of what the depth value into that plane is. So from the top would be zero and the bottom would be one or what, whatever bounds have you. So we can visualize this line strip if we draw each triangle using this rasterize function, but we're only going to have a 16 pixel wide view into the scene and when I say 16 pixel I mean it's one pixel stretched to 16 just to make it easier to make pictures out of. So each 16 by 16 or not 16 by 16 each 
each column is a single pixel blown up. And that's what this uh, vector Y buffer is. And because we're looking at the scene downwards, we're gonna be using a Y buffer since that's the axis we're looking at. We're gonna fill it with the minimum integer value as in as far down as we can go so that any value larger than the minimum integer value becomes, uh, it is, can be up, uh, overlaid on top of it. Uh, we're just gonna fill, we're just gonna draw the, the three shapes using our uh, rasterize function which we looked at in the previous chapter. Actually, no, we didn't. That's right, I was confusing it with the triangle function because um, that was rasterizing triangles. So this is a very special case function. It's a one-dimensional raster. It takes two, it's a one, it's, it's a one-dimensional viewport on a 2D plane. So, our P0 and P1 are the two ends of the line segment we're gonna draw. Now, the output is a single one-dimensional image, but we're gonna do the, the output is a one-dimensional image, but we have to remember the depth value, and that's where we pass in the integer buffer. So for every pixel along the plane, we're gonna keep track of the depth in the scene. Um, we're gonna use a classic trick of switching which points are the greater than or the greater or less than, so that way we're always counting from less than to greater, since that just makes our math a bit easier in the for loop. We iterate through each point, each pixel between these x value of P0 and P1, so if we have points four to, if we have, yeah, points at four and at, and at 12, we'll go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, then at each point, we need to calculate this T value. This T value represents the interpolation between the two points, uh, the two points. And we use this to determine the Y value because we're moving along this line segment on the x-axis so we need to uh, we need to figure out how far on the y-axis we are and then that will be uh, we use this t value not we need to find the t to find out how far along the line segment we are because then we can use that to determine how far into the scene we are and that is our y value here um, this is our depth into the scene then we check hey is this less than the, is our y value greater than the current y value in the scene? And since x is a positional coordinate, that means we can just index into the y buffer using that. And then if it is greater than, then we change the y buffer to that value and then set our pixel to the color. So this logic will only run when the new pixel being drawn is done closer to the camera. That was a whole lot of words. That didn't make much sense. Hopefully this picture makes it a little simpler. So first we start with the, we draw the first triangle. And since there's nothing in the scene, it starts out as black. But when we draw the red triangle, we draw all of the pixels along the red triangle because there's nothing else to block it. And if we look at the depth buffer, we go from this very dark to this light gray. And that's because it's, it's actually, if we go all the way back, uh, therefore, we can see that the red line is increasing left to right as it goes into the, into the scene. The second triangle we draw on top of it, and because the green triangle is pretty much completely on top, no, it is not completely, it is entirely on top of the red triangle, and that means we simply draw it completely over it and replace all those pixels. And if you notice the depth buffer, the depth values are for the green triangle here. Lastly, we have the blue triangle, which is the most interesting. Portions of it are above, below, the, and, and below the green triangle, and it's above and below the red triangle. But using the depth buffering, we always make, we keep track of the actual depth value at a per pixel basis, allowing us to accurately uh, draw the triangle without any artifacts over, or overlaps. If we see the final depth buffer, we see that there's one, two, three, well, one, two, three, oh yeah, one, 
is there really oh yeah that's right um there should be what there sh there's only what appears to be three different segments and that's because the boundary between the blue and green triangle in the middle and the blue and red triangle um are per, um right up next to each other so there isn't a discontinuity between them and then if we i just took the image from the beginning to compare it and we can see that the they're the same pattern of red green blue green blue red red green blue green blue red along the middle a middle line through all those triangles so that's a 2d representation of what's going on actually a 1d on a 2d plane anyways let's try to make it 3d it's the same principle but applied to 3d and instead of using a y buffer we use a z buffer because we center our camera so that the x and the y axis are the width and the height of the screen and the z axis is our depth and going towards the camera actually that yeah so the what that means is we're not going to be storing a one-dimensional buffer of depth values. We're going to be storing a two-dimensional buffer of depth values because we want to keep track on a 2D plane. Uh, you could create a doubly nested array, but it's simpler if you create a one-dimensional array and then just index into it based off your current x, y coordinate. And so this is a bit of conversion logic. If you have the x and the y, you just multiply the y by the width and add the x value. Um, and that's how you can index into it. And you can reverse that if you want to do x, y plus x times height instead. And for a one-dimensional to two-dimensional, you just modulo the width and or divide the width. Index being the current, the the, the current one-dimensional coordinate that you're considering. So the key for getting the depth value for a triangle is that we use the barycentric coordinates we calculated before to get the actual depth value. So we need the barycentric coordinates because that'll tell us where our pixel is inside the triangle and we can use that coordinate as the actual depth value that we want. Currently our camera is dead dead forward we so there is no uh, translation that needs to happen. And so we just simply multiply the z value of the triangle by our barycentric coordinate for that pixel. And then we do the check before where if our z value is greater than the current z value of which we have to index into the z buffer since it's a one dimensional array, then we change the z value to the new one and set the pixel. And so here is our after image of after we've applied this algorithm to our rasterized function, or triangle function, I mean. Um, and the lesson leaves it as an uh, exercise to the reader to implement texture mapping. And it's not terribly difficult, but since I'm following the tutorial and the tutorial doesn't do it, I'm not going to do it for you. However, I will say the, the basis for it is that you just, you have to load the UV coordinates from the model, the, by which the model loader class does for you, you just need to access. You have to load the texture, which I believe the TGA image class has a loader for, so you just point the TGA image at it and it loads it, you get the data into a, a, an accessible form. Then you need to take the UV coordinate of each vertex and using the barycentric coordinates you get through that you need to rasterize the triangle, you use that to figure out the UV coordinate of that pixel on the 2D plane of which is the texture data. And then you just sample that color and after doing the depth testing, splat it to the screen or not. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>